Dear Lord, we praise you so much, Lord, for the many blessings, the love that you give us every single day. Lord, you love us so much that you sent your son to be born here on earth to ultimately die for us for our sins. We thank you for the students. We thank you for the parents. We thank you for Ms. Schaefer, all the teachers, and all the other volunteers that make tonight possible. Be with us now as we celebrate, as we proclaim the good news found in your dear son, Jesus. Amen. We begin our worship together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christmas is coming. Let us prepare our hearts for Christmas during this Advent season. Advent means coming. We take time in this busy season to focus on the coming of our Savior, Jesus. God came to live among his people as spoken about by the prophet Isaiah in chapter 11. As promised, the Messiah will come through the line of King David from the family branch of Jesse. This is fulfilled in Matthew chapter 1, saying, The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they'll call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Please, please join us as we sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Candle on the Advent wreath as a visual symbol of Christ, the light of the world. The four week countdown to Christmas using blue or purple candles to remind us of the royalty of Jesus, and the pink one for joy, listening to the theme of hope, peace, joy, and love in our next Advent song. Yeah. 
promise remembered through the ages. With hope we are waiting. Emmanuel, God with us, we await your coming. With peace we are waiting. A joy of life that is eternal. With joy we are waiting. We remember your story of salvation. forgetting something. Christmas is getting to be too much. So busy baking, decorating, wrapping, and my to-do list is never ending. Yoo-hoo! Did you hear something? It is me, Hope. What hope is there? I don't think people will ever change. I don't think Christmas will get any better. In fact, I just see getting more and more hectic. There is hope because Jesus came to bring you new hope of life that is better than this. Hope through faith in God. in the wrong way. True peace is knowing God is in control and Jesus came to bring peace on earth and peace to the heart of those who have faith in him. joy is there, especially this time of the year, with all the advertising starting in September, people being disappointed in not receiving the gifts that they want for Christmas, buying presents you don't, for some people you don't even really know and some you don't even really like, spending money you don't have, and the disappointment when Christmas doesn't happen like it does in the movies. Well, real joy is the joy of God's presence. Joy is the coming of Jesus then, now, in the future. God's joy is in you. The spirit of Christmas is God's love sent down to earth in his son. God's love to you. The food, gifts, tree, and decorations are just for things for us to enjoy. They aren't the real meaning of Christmas. I've been trying to create the spirit of Christmas with outward things. You can't create it. It was God who gave the gift of his son to the world. Christmas is intended to be a celebration, not a contest. A celebration of the birth of, G of Christ and all that it brings to us.
Luke chapter 2, verse 10 and 11, the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Join us as we sing together, Angels We Have Heard on High.
is where the heart is, or so the saying goes. Home is a place of safety and rest. A space where we can be our true selves. We renovate old homes to make them new. We search cities and neighborhoods for a safe place to live with the people that we love. Home is certainly where the heart is. Remember that God came to dwell among us. To make a home with us, and this gives us a great reason to hope. Home is where God's heart is, and God's heart is always with us. The story of hope is thousands of years old. We live in a day where that hope is reality. However, the home is not a place of hope, safety, or peace for so many. Ever since God walked with Adam and Eve in the garden in fellowship, the dream home that God designed for us has been attacked. And it was our sin and disobedience that seemed to dash all the hopes of home forever. Sin brought jealousy, argument, and selfishness. Between siblings and friends, families and neighbors. Ever since man's first disobedience, we wrecked the home that God gave. But God sent, but God sent his son Jesus into the world to salvage our hope and to make a home again for all who believe. As Jesus lived his life on earth, as he went to the cross to defeat sin and death, he restored the hope. Jesus promised us in John chapter, chapter 14, verse 23, if anyone loves me, he will obey my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and take up residence with him. And so, on the first night of his life on, life on earth, among the cattle and the sheep, among the bales of hay and the barnyard smells, at the manger, Mary and Joseph had a home. For Christ, the Savior of the world, was present with them. Wherever Jesus is, the Father is with him, and he establishes a home. In this, in this first week of Advent, we light the candle of hope. We remember that our true home is not in a building, not a space with a roof and four walls. As we prepare our hearts for Christmas, we remember our true home. We come to the manger to experience true hope.
Good evening. Thank you for being here once again. My name is Pastor Steve, and what a joy it is to be able to be amongst you as the family of St. Paul. Um, but I think we should kind of give him a round of applause once again of being able to... Now, I know a lot of you right up here got here real early to be able for this moment, all right, of being able to hear Pastor Steve speak. So thank you for getting here so early. But uh, no, we're not here. We, we have the gospel message. We have the love of God and being able to have the incredible good news from the mouth of babes, as it says in the scriptures. It's not hard. It's super simple. And that's why it's a beautiful thing to hear it from the lips of children. Because the simplicity of the gospel is that God is for us, that God is is with us. And as you've heard that proclaimed here tonight, I just want to read to you what they're speaking from. And so, within that, Isaiah chapter 7 says this. Excuse me. Again, Isaiah said, "Here now, you house of David, is it not enough to try the patience of man. Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Isaiah chapter 7, written in 800 B.C. Matthew chapter 1. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Revelation chapter 21, I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, no more mourning, no more crying, no more pain. For the old order of things has passed away. As scripture continues to enlighten us, as scripture continues to proclaim to us over and over again, not just in this season, we have a God that is a God of hope. We have a God that is a God of peace. We have a God that is a God of joy. We have a God that is a God of love. God is love, and he loved you so much that he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, dwelt with us so that whatever we go through, what we've been through in these last two years, in the isolation or how you feel in the loneliness of this world or the way of this world, you can honestly say to yourself, by yourself, that I'm never alone. God is with me. He promises it and he always fulfills his promises. As I read to you from Isaiah in 800 B.C. and being able to have that Matthew account uh, just right after in 40 A.D. And then being able to see Revelation in the uh, 95 A.D. We get to see the span of time, but we get to see one thing fully constant always. God is a God of the past. God is a God of the present. And God will be God into the future. And this is his message to you. I love you. I forgive you. And I am with you always. We see that in Jesus, and we've heard that tonight. Thank you, children, for proclaiming the constancy of God, the God of yesterday, today, and forevermore. Would you please pray with me? Father, we thank you for hope, a certain hope, that as we believe in Jesus Christ, we have that home, we have that everlasting life in him, in the mansions of heaven, the home that says God is with his people. We also know, Lord, that we, are, we thank you for peace. And amongst the turmoil of life and amongst the sin of ourselves, we know that we have the peace of Jesus that surpasses all understanding. Lord, we thank you 
for that incredible joy that we can smile, that we can laugh, that we can walk through the ups and downs of life knowing that joy doesn't come in our circumstances, joy comes from Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the love that is beyond this world can give, the sacrificial love of you, God, sending your son, Jesus. So bless us into this season to be able to spread that hope, peace, joy, and love wherever we go. But knowing full well, as we walk forward, we walk forward hand in hand with our God who is with us, who will always be with us, and we get to say in belief in Jesus Christ, heaven is our home. Thank you, Lord, for that incredible message, and bless us this season. I pray in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. One of the incredible things that we get to uh, do, especially when you have the, the mic in your hands to get the little bit of the power uh, there. So um, uh, here is the reality towards that. I want to step aside, and uh, the children, we already clapped for you. Um, Mark Lohmeyer, uh, you're, you're an incredible gift to us, and uh, thank you uh, for uh, using it to God's glory. I know it says he's in the bulletin, but it's great to call out Tim Mutek, uh, being able to say, you see these little pods um, up there. He's making that recording. We're taking a look at how uh, we can get broadcast this more to the people that aren't here um, and being able to say thank you for all your hard work and getting this going and uh, doing that throughout our year here. <laughs> Keith LeCompte is in the back. And uh, he's doing lights, and he's been up on the lift, and he's been doing a ton of things this week. And so thank you, uh, Keith, uh, for being able to make this available in the back there. And you can't see her because she's all the way in the back, kind of crouched down because she's doing some of the help for the kids as well. Mrs. Sumner, thanks for stepping in and being back there and helping the kids. And those people are put into place because uh, she's incredible at getting a team together to do things just like this and bless us here at St. Paul. Uh, Ms. Rebecca Schaefer, you are incredible at what you do. And thank you, kids. Amazing who you are and what you're doing. Let's proclaim it.
Let us pray together. Thank you, God, for sending your son, Jesus, as you promised that first Christmas. Forgive us when we get distracted from the real reason for this season. Thank you that Jesus became like us to save us from our sins, from death and from the power of the devil. Help us as we wait and watch for you to come again and take us to our heavenly home. Amen. Tonight has been a great reminder to send us through this Christmas season. Our hope in the coming of the Lord, may his peace be with us. We live in the joy of Jesus our Savior, and we get to spread his love to others.